Phillips. Got past one, then two, then plays it into Sterling! That will do nicely! England in! Raheem Sterling's first major tournament goal! Made in Yorkshire, finished in his own neighbourhood by Raheem Sterling. This is the Thomas Depp Euro Podcast 2021. It's finally kicked off. The football hath doth begun. Mm-hmm. England with an emphatic 1-0 victory over the Croatian Steph. Uh, what did you think of it? What, did you th- what are your thoughts as a, as a football connoisseur? Uh, uh, only caught the second half. Right. Yeah, only caught the second half. But I thought we thought we looked good. Saw the goal. Yeah. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about the first half. I saw Foden's shot. Uh, three points on the board. Uh, not much more you can ask for, really. So uh, yeah, all eyes on Friday. We've had some uh, f- some feedback, and that kind of links into what you've just been rambling on about. Is right. that the last episode was good? Yeah, uh, we're finding its feet. You yeah. know, we've been three years out of the game, so obviously there's going to be a few nerves, a few mm. cobwebs to dust off. Uh, but it was too long. Let's be honest, uh, thirty-seven minutes our longest ever wasn't it? longest ever but almost double the length of the podcast on a regular basis so we're going to try and keep it a bit shorter a bit snappier a few more you know tight features less rambling right first feature tom uh we've touched on it briefly iron england you've obviously seen more than me i think what i would like to say is that we're two men in our early 30s sat here in england shirts yeah um so yeah we've got england fever uh, I'm actually yet to listen to Three Lions in full yet. I'm sort of, I'm leave, like, I don't want to listen to it yet. Yeah. I'm, I want to get the excitement to build. If it comes on the radio, I'm not, I'm, I'm switching over. I just want the excitement to build. Uh, I've not sung it yet, but yeah, Friday, Scotland, in a pub. I'm going to watch the first half this time. Yeah. And I'm, I might bloody, I hope you do. I might bloody sing the song. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, any more Iron England? I mean, let's be honest, our tactical analysis is not what it could slash should be. Yeah, I thought we played well, though. Yeah. I thought we played really well. We never looked in danger um, mm. and assured opening 20 minutes. And then, um, yeah, just kind of... Phillips was good, wasn't he? Yeah, he was very good. And Calvin. Very good. What I did like as well was um, Gareth Southgate's explanation about playing Kieran Trippier. Uh, what was his explanation? He, he said, I know it's mad, but he said Tyron Ming still early on in his international career. Uh, he said he wanted a calm, experienced head next to him in Kieran Trippier, which I think makes sense. You've got Chilwell and Shaw, haven't got much big tournament experience. Yes, they've won the Champions League, and yes, Shaw was in the PFA team of the season. But Kieran Trippier's just won La Liga. He's got big, big tournament experience. He wanted that calm head next to Tyron Mings, and that's why, uh, that's why, that's why we were like Gareth. Well. Do you know what, Steph? Yeah. Fair play to you because you've added some actual genuine insight there, which I didn't didn't know. So uh, yeah, well, far too far too much for this podcast. But no, yeah, I might have to cut that. Um, anyway, what's the next feature, Steph? Because uh, yeah, let's get let's let's get the show cracking. We're up okay, against, we're up against the clock in this one. Right, Steph. Um, obviously, last week we did uh, the cryptic clues. Tommy's cryptic clues. I don't know what happens in your brain, but yeah. Well, turns out a lot of people do know what happens in my brain, Steph, because we've had a lot of entries. Right. Um, obviously, there was a £20 Nando's voucher on the line, e-voucher, and uh, we had six entries to the cryptic clues. No way. Yep, yep. Six correct answers. As no well. way. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm staggered. Yeah. Well, you need to, you know, sharpen up a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to run through. There's no cryptic clues this week, but I'm just going to run through the answers quickly. Um, the black and white bird got tangled in some metal rope. So black and white bird. That's a black and white bird is a magpie tangled in some metal rope. Metal rope. That's wire. Magwire. Yeah. Harry. Well, magpie wire. Yeah. Well, 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 well magwire. Yeah, but it's magpie. Put right. the two and two together. Um, second one, and they were ringing out for Christmas Day whilst eating some cured meat. Um, Oh, what rings out for Christmas Day, Steph? Uh, the bells. Yeah, the bells. Uh, cured meat is also... Ham. Yep, yeah, put it together. Bells ham. <laughs> Bellingham. Right. Right. Number three, hot ball of gas and having that steak that took too many bites. What's a hot ball of gas? Sun. Yep. Yeah. Steak, bit chewy. Ch- ch- chew. Yep, yeah, put them together. 
Sun Chu. Next. Um, S- Sun Chu, sorry, who's that? The woman fended off the mugger. Are you telling me that's Sancho? Yeah. Right. The woman fended off a mugger with a spray and then walked up Mount Everest. So, woman fended off a mugger with a spray. Mace. Yep, yeah, correct. And then walked up Everest. What's that? <laughs> Mount. Yeah. Right, Mace Mount. Yeah. And then uh, number three. No, number, f- number five. What was that? Number five? Yeah, number five. Um, this river was also a great and a cartoon character. Uh, the River Trent is a famous river. Um, uh, Trent, the Great was a great, Alexander the Great, and mm. cartoon character was Hey Arnold. So pop, right. them, pop them together. And uh, he's got, not in the squad, Tom. Yeah, well, well he was when I wrote these. Anyway, um, so yeah, we had we had six entries. I did specify that the first person to email in would win the prize. You did. Who was it? Congratulations. Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> Thomas Casson. No way. 33 years old, young man from Stourport. Wow. And uh, so, Tom, congratulations. You won yourself the prize this week. Um, you did actually request it was £20 cash instead of the £20 Nando voucher, which. Not possible. Not, Is he a vegan? I don't know. Maybe he just Ooh. doesn't. I think I think that to be honest with you, Tom, I think the prize rolls over. Over. It's roll, a rollover. It's a rollover because okay. that wasn't the prize. Yeah. So you're saying he's if he doesn't want the Nando's voucher, he can't go with requesting a willy nilly. No, can he? that was specifically yeah the prize. So if he doesn't want it, it rolls over. Right. Okay. We've got a rollover then, Steph. What is that? A forty pound Nando's voucher? <laughs> a feast. Wow. Tom, we we launched the uh, song contest last week. Yeah. Uh, I had my doubts. I did have my doubts about doing two players, Jude Bellingham and Jack Grealish, the Birmingham boys. Have we had any entries? Well, Steph. Yeah. We haven't just had one entry. We've had two humongous entries to the song competition this week. And I know people are excited for this section and they'll probably switch off after this bit because, let's face it, it's the only reason people tune in, I think. Maybe you're right. The first song was sent in by a long-term contestant in this competition, um, a man who submits some fantastic songs over the year, and that is one Dan Hamer. Dan, take it away. Is this cut worth waiting for? If we live till 84, all we ever get is failure. Every day we say our prayer, hoping gas are standing there. Still we get the same old failure. There's not a chance, not a hope. Can we find, can we beg, can we borrow or catch? But there's nothing to stop us from getting a thrill when we all close our eyes and imagine. Jew, glorious Jew. Jude Bellingham's magic Don't mean to be rude But Bill, your haircut is tragic So sick of those long ball ploys What were we expressing? Good football teams do it, boys Gagan pressing Jude, glorious Jude, England's myth the revival. Now we're in the mood, on our way to the final. Just picture a great big chance, goalkeepers not moved. Oh, Jude, wonderful Jude, marvellous Jude, glorious Jude. Bloody hell. You know what? I didn't recognise the song straight away. No. And then it kicked in. Yeah. That is, I mean, that is brilliant. It is elite <laughs> level songwriting, that. That's picking a song that I would never have ever thought to go near. A musical number. A musical number. <laughs> it's, it's the first time we've had a musical number. We have. I'm, I'm delighted to see it. And you know what, Tom? It's currently winning. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know well, what? It's the only one, so. Oh, uh, well, true. I, I think we should actually... Uh, we should tease the second song. Uh, stay tuned for later on in this episode to hear song two. Oh, nice. Keep them... Keep, keep Yeah, keep them guessing. Keep them once. We've more. never done that yet, but a little teaser. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Um, in the meantime, I... I well, look, look, I'll be honest. I don't know what's in store here, but I've come up with a name for the feature because um, you told me that you'd spoken to a few fans out and about in the field. Um, so I came up with the feature name Fan Park. Yeah, so great, great little feature, that, Steph. 
Uh, obviously, I was out for the England Croatia game on Sunday, 2 p.m. kickoff. I was out in a in a busy uh, London-based bar, and I got to speak to some of the fans of the podcast. Here's what they had to say. <laughs> Hi, Steph. Uh, long-time listener, uh, OG host. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm invested in the podcast. Um, what I'll say to you, it's a it's a question. I'll put it in an email if I if I could, but well, this will have to do. Is nicey ricey and uh, and your impossible to follow Croatian dish good enough? I I don't know. Dave, you you mentioned before the the podcast has come back four years later and it's exactly the same as it was. Uh, you know, if a band releases a new album, they're probably trying to change something. You got anything to say on that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, I right, got England on the attack. No. Um, yeah, I guess you know. Obviously, the podcast is a roaring success. So there's a, there's a temptation to come back and do it all again to roll out the old hits. But the world's changing at a, a fast pace, and maybe it's time to bring in some new new features. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's it's quite upsetting, actually. Yeah, quite a lot went in. I mean, did he make this the octopus salad? I don't think so. No. Don't judge it until you yeah. cooked it and yeah. walked a mile in, you know, the uh, octopus's shoes. And yeah, anyway, um, we had uh, another little bit of feedback, Steph, and I think you'll find this one a little bit more positive. Uh, I don't know the details of what Dave's just said. All I know is that there was a lot of negativity. Um, from my perspective as a, a non-footballing fan, football fan, it hits the spot every time, you know? I love the quizzes. I love what you're doing with, uh, you know, the, the the Make a Wish Foundation thing. Have you, have you submitted a wish? I've not. No, no. Um, I kind of kind of waiting to see what people pitch in um, and really what the level of what you can actually achieve is. Um, yeah, but. I love the podcast. I thoroughly enjoyed it uh, last week. Uh, keep up the good work, lads. Thanks, Ben. That means a lot. Right. Well, yeah. Now that's better, and that comes from a man who I respect. Dave sounded drunk. Yeah. Ben Hardy sounded, you know, like he had it together. He's a father. He's a married man. Yeah. He speaks sense, and like, ultimately, I take. He's his, saying he's got his head screwed on. He's got his head screwed on. Um, you know, he's got. Yeah. He, he, you know, look. He, he says himself, he's a football fan that doesn't really know much about football, and that kind of is our audience. Isn't that it? is. That is very much. So, our Thanks for the feedback, Ben. Steffi? Yeah. Um, obviously, last week we launched the Football Make a Wish Foundation. We did, yeah. And we've had a couple of people slither into the old messages with, with their wishes. Once again, I'm astounded by the reach of this podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's there's several. Uh, there's only one. And right. I'm just gonna I'm just going to get it out there quickly just okay. whilst we're chatting. A uh, young man listener... Um, by the name of Jenna Del Vecchio. Oh, um, friend of the podcast. Friend of the podcast. Actually listening from Canada. So uh, oh, Global listen. appeal. Global appeal, again. Brixton, Five Star Pitches, misses you, Jenna. Um, but Jenna sends this in, Steph, and he's looking for us to make his wish come true. Um, he said, I want Ian Wright to sign an autograph to Jenna rather than Jennifer. <laughs> Ooh. That's my wish. Been carrying that scar since I was seven years old. Oh, no. In my head, I've just got like six-year-old Jenna going up. Yeah. To Ian Wright. Little, the young little Italian lad. Yeah. What's your name? Jenna. Is that what? Jennifer? Yes. And he's just too nervous. Yeah. Too nervous. Too nervous. Just yes. Something came over him, oh. starstruck. A bit starstruck. But yeah. He signed Jennifer. Yeah, he signed Jennifer instead of Jenna. Oh. Yeah. Leave it with me. Maybe some sort of video apology from him. <laughs> he wanted it. He wanted the re autograph. I'm not sure we can stretch to a video apology, well, but. Jenna, we'll see what we can do. Uh, new feature for you, new feature. Um, it's called Dream Team. Now, obviously, uh, people, you know, select their dream England team. People select their dream, you know, Man United team, their dream Premier League team. But Steph, um, you've got 90 seconds on the clock to name your dream starting 11 um, with reasoning. With um, reasoning? Yep. Yeah. Um, and it's all got to be, the twist is, it's all got to be... Harry Potter characters. So um, three, <laughs> two, one, off you go. Uh, Ron Weasley in goal. Uh, there was that that that, uh, that that film where he was in goal and he saved a couple, even though he did have a bit of that juice that made him, uh, you know, 
feel lucky. Uh, right back is Snape. I think he's like quite, you know, quite. He can get up and down that, but actually solid defensively. Centre back pairings of Fred and Rom, Fred and what's his name? What's his name? Fred and George Weasley. They're the centre backs. They've got a good understanding. Uh, left back Hermione. She's quite small, nimble, can get up and down. Very much the. Uh, yeah, you know, a bit like who am I thinking? Roberto Carlos, Hermione Granger. Uh, <laughs> left wing is Dumbledore. Like he's he's old, but he's still got the magic. He can still get up and down that wing and whipping that ball. Yeah. Absolute magic. Uh, centre midfield is Voldemort. Like hard oh, man, angry. He's uh, he's gonna, he's like the Roy oh, Keane man. He's the Roy Keane man. Next to him is Harry Potter. A lot of people don't think they can go well together. I think they can. It's like. It's like, what's his name? Lampard and Gerard. Can they work together? Can they not? I think they can. Uh, uh, right, right wing is uh, Lupin. <laughs> Lupin's in there. He can turn into a werewolf. He's dangerous. He's dangerous. He's angry. He's dangerous. Um, up front is Ginny Weasley. She's nimble. She's quick. She's the fox in the box. And next to him is Dean Thomas. <laughs> Uh, he's a West Ham fan, famously in the film. So he's actually got a bit of football understanding. And yeah, can be good in the air. You got ten seconds left. Uh, manager, <laughs> manager. Should I have a manager? Uh, manager for me is <laughs> manager for me is Hagrid. I think he's got the authority. <laughs> I think people like him, but he's also got that physical presence. When you look over to the touchline, he's big and strong, and you will listen to what that he's got to say. That has time. Yeah. Well. Jeez. Wow. I tell you what, your brain, your your brain goes to some dark places when you put on the spot like that. Yeah, and I think you've coped with it fantastically. Thanks, Tom. Um, so we're back with if people like Dream Team, let us know, and uh, we'll back, be back next week with a new uh, a new topic. That's good. Can I ask you next time? Uh, no, very much, very much. <laughs> my, my second. <laughs> So Steph, obviously this is episode two. Mm. Uh, this is where the podcast really finds its feet and gets you know gets rolling because it's starting to get some interaction from the fans. Okay. Um, I had a message in, uh, not via the email, but um, I had a message in from a young listener called Matt Berkeley, and he has been a long-term fan of the show. And he said, "I'm seven minutes in, and Nicey Ricey just isn't doing what Delhi's Deli did for me." Mm. Okay, well, welcome back to Delhi's Deli. <laughs> Um, just by pure coincidence, this recipe does have rice in it. <laughs> right. But listen, who are we playing on Friday? Scotland. Right. And what are the Scots famous for? Bagpipes? Haggis. Mainly haggis. <laughs> so what you need, Tommy, um, get yourself the sheep stomach lining. Right. Pop to the butcher. Waitrose is it again? Nah, Waitrose I think. <laughs> Waitrose I don't think we'll, we'll have this one in stock. So uh, yeah, pop to your local butcher. Yeah. Um, then I'm going to need you to get heart and lungs of one lamb or pig. Yeah. A uh, handful of beef or lamb trimmings. Now the trimmings are the bits that, you know, the little cut off bits, the little scrag end bits. Yeah. Uh, two onions, chop them up. You're up against uh, the clock here. The normal traditional recipe does say 200 grams of oatmeal. I'm using rice. Yeah. Um, chop it all up, uh, <laughs> sling it in a pan, a uh, bit of salt, a bit of pepper, a bit of dried coriander, a little bit of nutmeg, uh, some peas. Shot of whiskey, that's my idea. Um, cook it, like reduce it a bit, stuff it all in the stomach, use a needle and a thread to secure it up, boil it up for a few hours, uh, pop a cork in it if you like actually, Yeah. Uh, to keep it tender. Yeah. Uh, a couple of hours later, uh, it comes out, it's, it's perfect, gobble it down. And Tom, just to follow on from that, a yeah. little, uh, little uh, lesser known fact for you about haggis. Uh, in 1971, it actually became illegal to import haggis into the United States of America from the UK. Why? Due to a ban on food containing sheep lung. Brilliant. And that what, still stands what, today. So. Why is that relevant to a football podcast? Just a fact about haggis, isn't it? Yeah, great. So Steph, should we look into the second song of the song oh, contest? We teased it, didn't we? We did tease it at the start, and I feel like it's time to give them what they want. Who has Feed sang it? it? Who has sang it? Well, it's coming from what I know as a very musical listener of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes by the name of Chris Stewart. Oh, he's got, has he got a band? He, he does have a band, yeah. Um, Should you give him a plug? Yeah, give him a little plug. Isn't The uh, the band's called King Crisis. Key. King? King in Crisis. King in Crisis. Okay. King Crisis? King Crisis, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's a really good tune. Check him out on SoundCloud. And so Chris has sent in this stuff. What do you think? Time after 
the time gets up and takes us into dreamland Two Billingham, there couldn't be another I want that shirt number, just don't even bother Birmingham boys, making all the noise For England, gonna work together Gareth Scott is dreaming at last Those who don't believe are in the past Don't they know? Why can't they see? Get it done, 21 Coming home for you and me Jack Grealish, thank you very much He's a top player with a great first touch Hey Jude, got them on the run Gonna do it for England, gonna get the job done Do 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 Oh, oh. oh that, that took me to some places there because Last yeah. last tournament's winner was a Spice Girls song. Yeah, don't forget that. Yeah. But he's taking a real twist on it there. I can, I love everything about that stuff. It's been stuck in my head since he sent it in. And he's incorporated both players. Incorporated both players. Bonus points potentially on the cards. And do you know what? It's one of those songs that I can see being sung from the crowd. You say this every time. Yet yeah. to happen. Yet to happen. You know, Jack Grealish. Thank you very much. He's a top player with a great first touch. I mean, I can see it. I can see it. Hey Jude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, well done, Chris. Actually, that is, yeah, very good. And instantly, instantly, we, we're tied in first place. Yeah. So, well, you're the judge. Well, exactly, yeah. So, I'm going to have to really critique these songs, listen, break down the lyrics and stuff. Yeah. That's what I do every time, isn't it? Yeah. Break down the lyrics and, like, lock myself in a room for, for a couple of days and actually sort of work out the winner who deserves it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Final Mountdown. Good name. Questions all about Mason Mount. We're going to be ringing up a random fan of the show and they're going to have to answer five very tricky questions about around Mason Mount. Now get them all right and they're going to win £100. What? That's silly. Whoa. No. Do you know what they are going to win? No, that is silly. That is, that, that is silly money. Yeah, silly money. Okay. Uh, do you know what I've actually got? Yeah. I've got a... From work, I've got a, like a Nike England top. Okay. Like the t-shirts that they wear when they go on the, the coach and stuff. Okay. In a medium. So Good, right. If you're Tom Casson, no, you can't have it in a large. Um, so basically, all we're going to do now, Steph, is ring up a fan. And uh, if they can answer these five questions correctly, they win the shirt. It's easy as that. Big prize on the line. 100 quid. Tip slash t-shirt. T-shirt, sorry. Hello, big man. Oh, big in. Hi, hi, Matt. Welcome to the Thomas Steph uh, podcast. You've been selected for the final Mountdown. Right. The final what? The final Mountdown. Mason Mount. Right, here we go. Five questions All and right. you win yourself a t-shirt. Right. Sure. Question, they're quick fire, so you've got, to, you've got to really rattle them off. Right, here we go. Yeah. Question number one, which international team does Mason Mount play for? England. Question number two, what squad number is Mason Mount? Ten. Unlucky on Matt there. So I, I can't believe you answered. Fair play. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Tough actually. questions. Tough actually. questions. Uh, should we try one more person? Let's try one more person. Steph, who are we calling next? Uh, we're ringing Jasmine Banghard, who is um, the wife of our friend Alex Hood. Jasmine? Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Tom and Steph uh, podcast. You're live on air. Hi, Tom. How are you? Yeah, good. Tom, take it away. Hi, Jasmine. Uh, welcome to. The final mountdown. What's the prize on the line, Tom? Uh, it's a it's a England T-shirt, Jasmine. Okay, be- bear with me one second. <laughs> Are you at work, Jasmine? Apologies. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. No, you just caught me off guard. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. First question: Which international team does Mason Mount play for? Are you being serious? Yeah, that's the first question. Apparently. I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for England. Cha-ching! Okay, question number two, Jasmine. What squad number is Mason Mount? Um, I'll guess at 19. Unbelievable, right. Question three, she's halfway to the t-shirt. Question three, Jasmine, how old is Mason Mount? Ooh, tough one. How old is Mason Mount? 22? Yeah, 22. Right, she's through. <laughs> I didn't think someone was going to get this far. Really? She's, she's 22. He's 22. Right, this is the big one, Jasmine. Question number four: How many senior England goals has Mason Mount scored? Oh God, senior England goals. 
I want, I'm gonna gamble at, at four. <laughs> no. You just go right again. Because she has not. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Right. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Wasn't expecting someone to win the first time. Right. You've got to get the last question, though. Yeah, that's big. That is big. Um, is that actually four? It's actually four. Um, final question, Jasmine, and this is the big okay. one. And I, I'm going to have to rush you on this. It's a three second okay, okay. limit. Okay. Okay. Got three seconds to answer. How tall is Mason Mount? Three, two, so one. He's five foot nine. How, how tall is he, Tom? Five foot six, that was my option. Jasmine, I'm so sorry, but oh. Mason Mount is five foot eleven. Wow. Wow, oh, he's, he's taller than I thought. Yeah. I thought he was a bit tick. Yeah. Oh, I'm really, really sorry, Jasmine. That's all right. That's all right. I wasn't... mean, thanks for, uh, thanks for getting me involved, guys. I really appreciate it. Cool, that was tough. That was tough on Jasmine. Yeah. Um, gave I mean, a bloody good effort, that. Yeah, almost got to the, the magic five. Yeah, I would have probably gone 5'10". I think he's one of those like deceptively slightly taller than you think people. I think, but... I think you're right, Steph. Um, but yeah, if you want to play the final mountain down, there'll be five new questions next week. Send in uh, an email to TNS, you're a podcast on Uh Let us know if you're keen, let us know your number, and uh, we might be in touch. Excellent. Um, I think that about rounds us off, Tommy. Um, as we probably should do, we should talk on the football. England, Scotland on Friday. Uh, are you feeling feeling confident? Yeah, I'm hoping to edit this tomorrow slash Wednesday. So, oh wait, no, tomorrow. So hopefully it'll be dropping on Friday morning. Okay. In fact, let's just cut that out. Yeah. Yeah, England, Scotland, Steph. Huge game. Uh, I feel like the pressure is off quite a bit yeah. after getting that win against It's a weird one because I actually wanted Scotland to go through. Yeah. So they still might. They still might. They still could. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate a draw, but obviously I want England to win. Yeah. Um, I'm expecting to see a bit of rotation from Gareth. I'm expecting to see. Okay. I'm expecting to see Jack Grealish. I hope so. Um, I'm expecting to see a bit more of Jude Bellingham mm -hmm. and hopefully Luke Shaw. Well, fingers crossed, Tom. Um, if, if if none of those guys make the starting lineup, then um, yeah, then you've got to question our credentials. But yeah. yeah, I think a bit of rotation would be good, uh, particularly in this heat as well. I yeah, think yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's going to take it a lot out of the lads. So, yeah, fingers crossed uh, for another England win. Six points will see us through to the uh, the next round. Um, so let's go. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, uh, we'll be watching that one together. A couple of drinks and uh, see everyone for the next episode. Yeah, love you guys. See you later.